And uh, one more statement. The first hardcore single is by The Avengers. It's the first single. We are the one. To me, that's the first hardcore single ever made. That's my opinion. Thank you. Huh. Well, I can argue with you. So you are responsible. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are the leaders of tomorrow. We are the ones to have the fun. We want control. We want the power. Not gonna stop until it comes. We are not Jesus. We are not fascists. I had a break when I was on a major label for my um, musical career, so I took a, about a seven year break, and then I came back. So I've worked in the library for a long time. When I started working up in the San Francisco History Center, I noticed that they had the hippie collection, and I thought, oh, well, if they've got a hippie collection, they really need to have the punk collection as well. So I talked to the city archivist, Susan Goldstein, who's my boss, and. She was very interested. One of the things that I wanted to get to the library was the Penelope Houston Avengers collection. This is definitely a valuable poster because it is Pettibone. And it has that weird look because it was framed. It had something acid on it and then something not acid framing it. I could bring all this stuff that had been piling up in my life here and make sure that the important parts of it got archived. It wasn't a big stretch for them to start collecting in the area of punk. We have a lot of great photos and flyers and ephemera from that period that I could donate myself. And then from there, I decided, you know, why not pursue other people, other bands, and get them to donate as well. The historic moments in San Francisco punk history is Sex Pistols concert, which was at Winterlands. It brought all of the punks on the West Coast to San Francisco to see this show because the Sex Pistols played the East Coast and then they played Texas and a few places in the South and then they came directly to San Francisco. They skipped LA, they skipped most of the media centers. So San Francisco was really the biggest show for them. It was their biggest show ever. Their tour manager, Rory Johnston, um, was interested in managing the Avengers, my band, and we were asked to open to support the Pistols with that show, and then another band, the, the Nuns, were also asked to open the show. It was certainly the biggest crowd that we'd ever played to. So it was kind of terrifying, but it did bring people all the way from Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, San Diego, all up and down the coast, in LA, obviously, to San Francisco to see this show. And there are a lot of people who say that after they saw this show, they decided that they were gonna start their own band. So it was a great sort of jumping off point for a lot of West Coast punk. But it was also the Pistols' last show, so in a way it was like the end of one era of punk and the beginning of a new one. The city of San Francisco didn't necessarily support punk rock. And last but certainly not least is Jello Biafra. Jello is the punk rock candidate who was the lead singer of the group called the Dead Kennedys. There was one other plank in his platform of having all businessmen in the downtown area wear clown suits. But if we're blaming anybody in, in San Francisco, we'll just blame the Dead Kennedys. There you go. Yeah. We had some situations where concerts were canceled due to flyers, obscene flyers, that the city thought was obscene that had been put up. The city of San Francisco has really come around to embrace its musicians. When they had the centennial for the city hall, they brought in all kinds of local musicians and I got to perform at that. That was in a way an appreciation from the city of San Francisco for its musical legends. I feel like a lot of people in San Francisco don't realize what resources there are at the library. We had a film series, the SF Punk film series that I put together, and it was nearly sold out every single night. People were so appreciative that somebody was bringing this for them, and it's free. Everything in the library is free. <laughs> And he's also a film producer uh, who has a film coming out maybe in 2018 mm -hmm. about crime. Oh, and what's woo. the title of it? Uh, it's called uh, San Francisco's First and Only Rock and Roll Movie, Crime 1978.
<laughs> right. When I first went to the Art Institute before the Avengers were formed in 77, I was gonna be a painter. I didn't know that I was gonna turn into a punk singer. So I got back into painting and I mostly do portraiture and figurative painting. And one of the things about this job here is I discovered some great resources for images for my painting. And I was looking through these mugshot books that we have here that are from the 1920s, about the 1920s and 30s. And I did a whole series of mugshot paintings from those books. And they're in the San Francisco History Center's SF Police Department records. There's so many different things that the library provides for San Franciscans that I, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I don't have a library card, I've never been there. They need to come down and just check it out and find out what we have. And the people who are hiding stuff in their cellars and wondering what to do with these old photos or old junk, whether it's hippie stuff or punk stuff or stuff from their grandparents, if they bring it here to us, we can preserve it and archive it and make it available to the public in the future.